Being very close to 10.15, we're going to uh, have member statements. Member statements. Oh, point of order, the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport. A speaker, if you seek it, you will find unanimous consent to allow members to wear ribbons in recognition of September 27th being Rowan's Law Day. Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport is seeking the unanimous consent of the House to allow members to wear ribbons today in recognition of Rowan's Law. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Member statements? I recognize the member for Newmarket Aurora. Monsieur le Président, Thank you, Speaker. Last weekend, on September 24, 2023, I attended a flag raising ceremony in Aurora. We observed the Franco Ontarians Day. I was invited to speak by Lauriane, who is the executive director of the Tribune community. I had the privilege to observe this magnificent green and white flag being raised, being risen rather. It was a pleasure for me to observe that our dreams, our dynamism was floating in the air together with all the people of the province. The president of the Boitrillium Association and New Market Aurora people made efforts in order to honor this flag. I would like to thank them, but the Boitrillium teams and all the leaders are always getting together to offer many occasions for us to get together, to share, and to celebrate our Francophonie. I would like to underline and to thank all our teachers, educators, who are teaching French language to our children. Thanks to them, we are perpetuating our heritage and our French culture. Thank you. Thank you. Member Member for Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. On Monday, the Ontario Health Coalition brought almost 10,000 people on the front lawn of our legislature. The entire NDP caucus was present, but not one member of the Conservative Party came to hear their message. The thousands of people who came spoke with one voice. Their message to the government on behalf of millions of Ontarians is really clear. Stop privatizing our health care system. Many shared personal story of being charged at private clinics for services that should have been free, of having to pay $200 to a nutritionist in order to get a colonoscopy, $1,000 for a lens that their ophthalmologist prefers to use but is not covered. The Auditor General Outpatient Surgery reports finding that are not pretty but not surprising. Her report shows private clinics overcharge, many double bill, and there is no accountability for their action. Yet the Premier and the Minister of Health continues to give more and more money to private clinics, clinics who poach staff from our public health care system, making the health care staffing crisis worse. I'm from the party of Tommy Douglas, the father of Medicare, a program that defines us as Canadian, as Ontarian, where care is based on needs, not on ability to pay. Ontarians are united. They want the government to stop the privatizations of our health care system. We live in a democracy, Speaker. I hope the government starts to listen to the people of Ontario, not just the donors who showed up at their fundraisers. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Kitchener, Conestoga. Thank you very much, Speaker. The leaves are starting to turn, and that can uh, only mean one thing when you feel that chill in the air. It is time for fall fairs. Yeah. First, the community answered the call of Come One, Come All um, for the 170th, 170th colleagues, Wellesley Township Fall Fair. 
The new Hamburg Fall Fair took place earlier this month with the theme of Farm Gate to Dinner Plate. Guests enjoyed midway rides, exhibitions, and the ever-popular Demolition Derby. And coming up at the Wellesley Apple Butter and Cheese Festival uh, famously starts this weekend, Mr. Speaker. Come on out to Wellesley and enjoy a pancake and sausage breakfast and be sure to visit the new hard cider tasting, which I'm sure, Mr. Speaker, you're very interested in. Uh, and speaking of which, Oktoberfest is back. The official keg tapping will take place on Friday, October 6th in the Wilkeman Platz Beer Garden. Raise a stein, grab your later hosen, and come join me for a polka at the world's largest polka. Oktoberfest outside of Germany. Absolutely. There's plenty to see and do across the region of Waterloo and my riding of Kitchener Conestoga. I invite all my friends, family, and colleagues to come down and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Spadina, Fort York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ontario Place is a scandal on the scale of the former Conservative government's sell-off of the 407, which sentenced Ontarians to 100 years of paying unlimited tolls on what has become one of the world's most expensive toll highways. It's on a scale of the Liberals' gas plant orange and cash for access scandals and their privatization of Hydro One and eye exams. No wonder that Ontarians cannot afford housing, food, student debt payments and hydro bills because successive Liberal and Conservative governments have pillaged this province and given away our public assets and services to their donors. Ontario Place is one of the most valuable public parklands in Canada, but this Conservative government is giving it away to a private for profit Austrian mega spa for free and throwing in 650 million taxpayer dollars to boot. Every Ontarian is contributing approximately 100 tax dollars to this mega spa company, even though most of us will never use it. Last week, in the same week that he apologized for breaking his promise not to touch the Greenbelt, Premier Ford broke his promise to respect the city's planning process on Ontario Place. The Conservative government announced that they will begin obliterating the trees and wildlife on the West Island in defiance of the city's planning process. What does an apology mean if the Premier continues to break his promises? How can anybody have any trust in anything that Premier Ford says? Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Perth Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to recognize an amazing achievement of a local athlete in my riding of Perth Wellington. Brooke Overholt, hailing from the beautiful town of St. Mary's, made headlines over the summer when she uh, competed at the World Track and Field Competitions in Budapest, Hungary. She is the first athlete from Perth County to compete at the world stage. The St. Mary's athlete ran 56.20 seconds in her women's 400-meter hurdles heat at the 2023 wow. World Track and Field. Finishing just five spots back, back behind the qualifying run for the semifinals. Even before competing on the world stage, she made headlines where she earned a bronze medal at WASA, OFSA Regionals, OFSA, and, 20, and in 2019, she represented Canada at the under 20 Pan Am Games. Speaker. Brooke is not one to rest on her laurels. She's a true embodiment of the relentless spirit of our athletes and she now sets her sights on the greatest stage of all, the Olympics. She is working, on to, working to improve her times so that she can compete in a spot for Canada's 2024 Canada Olympic team. Her teammates describe her as a patron of confidence and humility. In victory and defeat alike, she remains a class act and a shining example of, of, for athletes everywhere, Speaker. Brooke, know this. The entire community in the province of Ontario is behind you as you strive to compete at the Olympics in 2024. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Windsor West. On Monday, the Premier claimed Ontarians are a thousand percent better now than they were when he took office in 2018. We have an affordability crisis, a housing crisis, a health care crisis, an environmental crisis. We have a government that's wrapped up in scandals while Ontarians are struggling to make ends meet. The Conservative government has had five years to make things better for Ontarians, but instead, 
are only working to benefit their rich developer friends and donors. Life has gotten harder and harder for everyone else. This government is solely focused on selling off and privatizing vital land and public services. The Greenbelt, Ontario Place, highways, health care and social services. The Greenbelt giveaway was never about housing. This government's own housing task force stated that the goal to build 1.5 million homes is possible without opening up the Greenbelt. We are all elected to serve the people of this province to make their lives better, but the Conservative government is withholding billions of dollars for health care, mental health and addiction care, social assistance, women's shelters, and the list goes on. We need ODSP and OW income rates at least doubled. We need profit out of long-term care and home care so quality care comes first and seniors, our loved ones, can live with respect and dignity. We need better, faster and more reliable public transit. We need to respect Indigenous voices, concerns and their consent. Better is possible, Speaker, and as New Democrats, we'll continue to fight for better because we believe in putting people over profit. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Flamborough, Glanbrook. Thank you and good morning, Mr. Speaker. It is great to be back at Queen's Park after the summer break in the midst of one of the best times of the year in Flamborough, Glanbrook fall fair season, and it's my pleasure to rise today to recognize the people who make the fall fair such a memorable time of the year in our communities. In the month of September, the people of Flamborough Glanbrook enjoy both the Binbrook Fair and the Ancaster Fair. This year was the 170th Binbrook Fair, and I'm proud to have sponsored the Demolition Derby for the fourth year in a row. And as Thanksgiving is fast approaching, we are preparing for the annual Rockton World's Fair. Since 1852, the Rockton World's Fair has been a Thanksgiving tradition for many in not only Flamborough-Glanbrook, but from surrounding areas as well. These fairs are, are an opportunity for us to recognize our commitment to agriculture and to bring people together. I encourage everyone to make your way to the Rockton World's Fair this October 5th through 9th to support our community and to enjoy livestock shows, live entertainment, demolition derbies, a variety of vendors, and much, much more. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Haldeman Norfolk. I think. <laughs> On behalf of the men we love, our grandfathers, fathers, sons, brothers, nephews, all who should have access to OHIP covered PSA testing. As a female, I have access to early detection tests, yet Ontario refuses to alter the current OHIP coverage for PSA testing. Allegedly due to national guideline recommendations, yet eight other provinces have managed to make this change. Prostate cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer amongst Canadian men, and the PSA test is a key step in early detection. This government covers a PSA test for those whose practitioner suspects prostate cancer or those who have already been diagnosed. That's not the definition of early detection. I was honoured to speak recently at the Ride for Dad, a charitable motorcycle ride with the mission to save men's lives. 20 years of advocacy and nearly $40 million later, and yet this government spins its wheels on this issue. The day of the ride, we heard stories from survivors who were blessed with early detection, but also tragic stories from those who have lost a loved one. The cost to treat cancer is far greater than the $3 million projected for regular PSA testing for men over 50. Our colleague from Niagara-on-the-Lake in Fort Erie brought this issue forward last year, and today I am joining him in this fight to do the right thing. I want the men in my life to be around for Christmas, birthdays, and summer barbecues. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next member's statement, the member for Burlington. Good morning, Speaker. I rise today in this House to celebrate a truly remarkable milestone in Burlington's history. This year, we celebrated Burlington's 150-plus anniversary. This momentous occasion allowed me to reflect upon the rich tapestry of my community's past. Burlington has deep Indigenous roots that flow through the city's history, giving way to a present community that is strong, enduring, diverse, spirited, 
resilient, and full of culture. This milestone is not just about looking back at the early pioneers and visionaries who laid the foundations of this great riding. It's also a celebration of our accomplishments and a testament to how we've grown and how we will continue to evolve together to build a brighter future. From humble origins rooted in agriculture to the bustling commercial and cultural hub that my riding has become, the evolution continues as we forge an identity that is uniquely Burlington. Call me biased, but Burlington is one of the best cities and ridings and truly a wonderful place to work, raise a family, and call home. Thank you. Member statements? The member for Stormont, Dundas, South Glengarry. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. It's great to be back at Queen's Park after a busy summer with my constituents in Stormont, Dundas, and South Glengarry. Mr. Speaker, it is recently announced that the Ontario government is investing more than $4 million in victim support grants to Ontario Police Services through the Victim Support Grant Program. I'm pleased to share that three local police services in Stormont, Dundas, South Glengarry, the Cornwall Police Service, Stormont, Dundas, Glengarry OPP Detachment, and the Aquasasini Mohawk Police Service are each receiving $100,000 to support victims and survivors of intimate partner violence, domestic violence, human trafficking, and child exploitation. Excellent. Mr. Speaker, this funding is extremely important to my constituents and law enforcement officers in Stormont, Dundas, and South Glengarry and across the province. I have heard firsthand from my constituents about their concerns about abuse and violence. These stories serve as a reminder of the important work that is being started by child abuse survivor Aaron Marin through Aaron's Law, which educates the importance of knowing the signs of child sexual abuse and ensuring children are taught age-appropriate content to protect themselves. One week from today, Mr. Speaker, my private member's bill, Aaron's Law, will be up for second reading with consideration to bring additional level of ed education and support to our children in schools across Ontario. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our member's statements for this morning.